Hi everybody, Steve here. Welcome to your next edition of Highlights. One of the questions I'm asked a lot, either through email or at my seminars, whether they're live seminars or web-based seminars, is will support or resistance hold, and other questions related to if a certain level will hold or not. And my response is, you just don't know. And with that idea, I have what I call my if-then scenario. Okay, this is on my DVD workshops for those who have it. But, you know, it's always good to review information again. And for those who don't have it, this will be a good educational um, session. So my if-then scenario, there's a lot of subcomponents. The two I want to focus on uh, in the session today, and this is actually one of my uh, Nissen trading principles. I have about 15 uh, Nissen trading principles. And uh, the two I want to focus on today, I actually have like three or four if-then rules. Uh, if the market does not act as forecasted, then exit the position. And then it, uh, initiate a position when the market justifies your potential trade. So if then, if the market does such and such, so if the market breaks above resistance, then then you do your action, in this case, then buy. So let's look at the, uh, for the uh, aspect of the if-then scenario. We're actually going to look at at the second one, initiate a position uh, when the market justifies your potential trade. But before we do that, uh, because we're going to be looking at a head and shoulders, I want to briefly review what a head and shoulders, and this is, by the way, what we're going to look at first, the if, uh, this if-then rule. So, the head and shoulders, refresh your memory, the market rallies, pulls back, rallies again, the middle rally is higher than the first rally, and uh, rally peak, and then the market descends and then rallies again and stalls. And the middle part is called the head. The head is higher than the two peaks, right, uh, left shoulder, head, right shoulder. And when you connect the lows, when I mean the lows, not just the lows of the real body, but the lows of the session, the bottom of the lower shadows, the lows, you have what's called the neckline. And we call this a head and shoulders in the west, but in the east, they actually call it a three Buddha pattern. Uh, this has been around since the late 1700s, based on my Japanese translations. And the reason it's called the three Buddha pattern is because there's a middle Buddha, and there's two smaller Buddhas or saints uh, to the left and right of the uh, main Buddha. So same pattern, different sides of the world, just reflects how the same technical patterns can emerge um, on opposite sides of the world because people are, you know, people, we all have the same emotions, fear, greed, hope. So anyway, this is a head and shoulders top. So let's look at how we look uh, look at the if-then scenario. So here we have, uh, and by the way, we're going to be focusing on Forex in this particular highlights edition. But what I'm saying here is true in all markets, in all time frames. So we have a head, left sh uh, sorry, a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder. Now this is the neckline. This is the dashed neckline. And I personally, if the neckline is so close to a recent low or pivot low, I would actually use this as my support area. But either way, even if you say the market broke marginally under the support here with this red candle instead of black, it's red in this charting package. And instead of white, it's green for the real bodies. Uh, even if you say the market broke under this neckline here, it's cer certainly not a decisive break. And especially if you're using the support area, although the market moved under it, it didn't close under it. So it really did not or marginally broke under the neckline over here. So this to me would not be a break of the neckline. So what that means, the if-then scenario, if the market breaks the neckline, and this to me is not a decisive break, uh, then we would act accordingly. So if the market closed decisively under the, the support area here, which in my opinion did not, okay, then we would be thinking about selling short. By the way, one of the great advantages of trading Forex is ju it's just as easy to sell short as it, as it is to go long. Uh, anyway, so here, this to me is not really a confirmed head and shoulders. So this is a potential head and shoulders over here. It's not a confirmed head and shoulders until the market decisively closes under the neckline. So the if-then scenario, if the market decisively closes under the neckline, then we could think about selling short. If not, you would not be selling short. And by not selling short, look how much money you would have saved. Okay, if this was a standard lot, you're looking at saving on this chart four thousand dollars. 
So the if-then scenario, if the market does such and such, then we act accordingly. In this case, the market did not break decisively under the support area, so it is not a confirmed head and shoulders. All right? Now let's look at the next aspect of the if-then scenario. This has to do with stops. If the market does not act as forecasted, forecasted then get out of the position. Okay, whenever you do a trade, there should be a rationale be, uh, for doing the trade. For those who have my new DVDs, the Reignited DVDs, you know we have a whole section on using a trading journal. And one of the rules with the trading journal is you write down why you're doing the trade. Okay, if the trade uh, out outlook is not going as anticipated, then exit the trade. So let's look at this. So here again in the Euro, US, same market as we were looking at before, just, just another uh, different time. Last time we were looking a few months ago, this is uh, through uh, this August. So this is a head and shoulders top. Notice how the doji told us the prior rally was running out of steam, all right? So the doji became resistance based on a close for a while. Market pulled back, rallied, another doji. And this gives us the, the power, the beauty of the candles. Look at this, the bulls are in charge, the bulls are in charge, and in this one session, the whole tone of the market had changed. So, market pulled back. So we have a, a left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder. The market did break under the neckline, okay, decisively. So let's look at the if-then scenario about if the market does, uh, if you uh, uh, do a trade based on an anticipated action, and if the market doesn't do what you anticipate, then you get out. So the market broke under support. Now, based on the head and shoulders, the head and shoulders neckline, and let me go back here because I did forget to make reference to it. Okay, once the neckline is broken, that neckline should be a resistance area. And by this way, by the way, the neckline could be an angled neckline. I just show it as horizontal. Either way, the neckline, once broken, should become resistance. So if you do sell short under a decisive close under the neckline, if the market gets back above the neckline, then you're wrong. Then you should exit the position. So let's get back to the slide here. So the market did break under the support area decisively, but look what happened the next session. The old support should have been resistance. And if you weren't comfortable saying, okay, it wasn't a decisive close above the resistance area, certainly on the next session that occurred. So if you were short on this trade, then you should have been out, then, uh, then you should have been out because the market told you you were wrong. One of the great things about the charts is there's always a price that says you're wrong. Now, a couple of minutes ago, I mentioned that the strategies I discussed here can be used in all the markets with the if-then scenario. But there are some specific strategies geared to the Forex markets. So for that reason, I've decided to do a two-day live seminar focusing on Forex. It's my first FX exclusive seminar in at least two years, and I am not doing one next year. My schedule is just too crammed. And we're going to be doing this with the idea it's for anybody who is even thinking of trading Forex or if you're a Forex pro. And that's why we're calling it the complete A to Z of Forex trading. And as I made reference to before, there are nuances with using candles with Forex. And so we're going to go over those specific strategies, the specific differences between using candles in Forex and non-Forex. Uh, because we're going to also focus on Forex for those who are thinking of trading Forex or brand new, we're going to give you a lot of inside information on exactly how the Forex markets really work. Not only with, you know, which technicals, which are my favorite uh, candle signals and Western signals for Forex, but which fundamentals have the greatest impact on Forex. And we're going to have a raffle for two computers. So no matter what level of Forex experience, whether, as I mentioned before, you're brand new or a Forex trading expert, I've designed this seminar to bring you to expert level in Forex trading. So here's the link. And again, that is going to be October 3rd and 4th in Vegas. Look forward to seeing you there. And may the candles continue lighting your path to greater profits.